Hello, Serious Survivor here. Today we're going to talk about several types of plants that have well-documented medicinal value. This video is number four in the Apocalypse Tips series and will detail as many natural remedies as possible. For brevity's sake, I will limit each video in this series to 10 medicinal plants and there will be several installments to this series. The use of plants, fruits, herbs, and vegetation is a time-honored tradition in many cultures used to aid in strengthening the body and also in treating diseases, illnesses, and sicknesses. These, however, can trigger side effects from time to time and allergic reactions, and they can also interact with other herbs, supplements, or medications one may be taking. This medicinal plant series will present descriptions and some history of the medicinal uses of many types of these plants. The intention is not to provide specific medical advice to anyone. Study the types of plants common to your area. It's important to understand that medicinal plants interact with your body on a chemical level. This means you can experience side effects the same as you would with pharmaceutical medication. If you experience side effects, immediately cease using the plant and contact your physician if possible. Now in an apocalyptic scenario, there may not and probably will not be a physician or an expert to contact. This is why it's so important to understand the properties of the plants that you will be in close proximity to, knowing which ones may benefit you and which ones may harm you. This is something we need to learn well before we are in a SHTF without rule of law or apocalyptic scenario. With this being said, the plants we will focus on in this series are time tested and most of these are even used in manufacturing of modern pharmaceuticals. It is estimated that approximately 25% or more of all pharmaceuticals produced in the U.S. are derived directly from chemical compounds extracted from the plants that we will be discussing. Many of the plants are found commonly throughout the United States and the Americas and these plants have a long history of medicinal, preventative and even recreational uses. Many countries worldwide use these forms of alternative medicines as primary treatments due to the extreme cost and limited availability of pharmaceuticals. So, let's get started. Alfalfa. Alfalfa is one of the earliest cultivated plants and has been used for centuries in feeding livestock. With roots that can grow up to 20 to 30 feet deep, it's still relatively easy to grow, thriving in many of the various climates around the world. It is also an excellent source as a protein-rich food staple for cattle, horses, sheep, other animals, and even humans. Alfalfa is native to the Mediterranean and Middle East, yet throughout centuries of transplantation and cultivation as a crop, it is now common in most of Europe and throughout the Americas. The name alfalfa stems from the Arabian terms al fak faka which is translated as father of all foods. Its high protein content and abundant supply of vitamins make it an excellent nutritional source. It has been used throughout history to treat morning sickness, nausea, upset stomach, arthritis, kidney stones, kidney pain, urinary discomfort, boils, and irregular menstruation. It is a powerful diuretic that has somewhat of a stimulant power. It is known to help energize one after a bout with an illness. It's a liver and bowel cleanser and long-term consumption can help reduce cholesterol. You can utilize the seeds and sprouts and with this plant it's fine to eat the leaves straight from the earth. A typical dose of alfalfa for tea is one to two teaspoons per cup steeped in boiling water for 10 to 20 minutes. Aloe vera is native to Africa, yet through transplantation and widespread cultivation is now found in many areas around the world, including the U.S. This plant does not appear in the wild as often as is found in gardens, greenhouses, and herbal supplement shops. It contains a large amount of different vitamins, including vitamin A, B1, B2, B3, B6, C, and E. It's also rich in choline and folic acid, all of which help the skin regenerate and stay healthy. There are also many minerals present as well, such as calcium, iron, potassium, copper, manganese, selenium, sodium, chromium, and many more. Protein is an essential factor in creating new cells, and aloe vera is loaded with amino acids which are essential for the creation of proteins. Within aloe vera extracts, you'll find more than 20 different amino acids that will help the formation of bone, organ tissue, 
skin. It's easy for the bloodstream to become clogged with fat and plaque. Aloe vera is a natural defender, supplying three different plant sterols, which are fatty acids that protect the blood, particularly HCL, which is a good cholesterol that reduces the amount of fat within the blood. Not only do these fatty acids protect the blood, but they can reduce the effects of allergies also. Aloe vera is gelatinous and moves through the intestines at a fairly slow pace. And along the way, it absorbs the majority of toxins that your body doesn't want or need. And research has shown that aloe vera in the system provides better oxygen distribution throughout the body. This helps the heart as well as other organs in the body. The scientific research consisted of injecting aloe vera directly into the blood, yet similar effects can be achieved by using the extracts on a long-term basis. The sap from aloe vera is extremely useful to speed up the healing and reducing the risk of infections for wounds, cuts, burns, eczema, and in reducing inflammation. Apart from its external use on the skin, aloe vera is also taken internally by means of drinking the aloe vera juice or extracts for treating the conditions we spoke of earlier and for ulcerative colitis, chronic constipation, poor appetite, and digestive problems. Echinacea. Echinacea seems to activate chemicals in the body that decrease inflammation, which might reduce cold and flu symptoms, and it also seems to contain chemicals that attack yeast and other kinds of fungi directly. As one of the world's most important medical herbs, the echinacea has the capacity to raise the body's resistance to bacterial and viral infections by stimulating the immune system. It also has antibiotic properties that helps relieve allergies. Basically, the roots are beneficial in the treatment of sores, wounds, and burns. It was once used by Native Americans as an application for insect bites, stings, and snake bites. The echinacea grows on any well-drained soil as long as it gets sunlight. It is a group of herbaceous flowering plants from the daisy family. There are nine species of this plant which are commonly called purple cone flowers. They are found in eastern and central North America and in the Rocky Mountains. They are also found growing in moist to dry prairies and also in open wooded areas. They have large showy heads of flowers and bloom from early to late summer. These flowering plants and their parts have different uses. The type used medicinally is Echinacea purpurea. Two of the species of this plant are listed in the United States as endangered species though. It's native to Central America, but it's a flowering plant and it's a popular herb throughout the world. The leaves, flowers, stems, and roots of the Echinacea can be used for medical purpose. It is the best anti-inflammatory herb for stiffness of joints. It improves the immune system of the body. The roots of the Echinacea are widely exported for medical purposes. It stimulates the growth of blood cells, and it's rumored to have preventative properties against the common cold, bronchitis, and sore throats. A tea is made from the roots of this plant and can be consumed five or six times on the first day of your cold symptoms, then reduce it to one cup per day over the following five days. Some of the things Echinacea is used to treat are anxiety, to help with exercise performance, gingivitis, herpes simplex virus, HSV, the human papilloma virus, HPV, influenza, or the flu, low white blood cell count, middle ear infection, tonsillitis, eye inflammation, warts, urinary tract infections, bloodstream infections, strep infections, syphilis, typhoid, malaria, diphtheria, migraine headaches, bee stings, swine flu, rheumatoid arthritis, indigestion, pain, dizziness, rattlesnake bites, and other conditions. This is known as one of the most valuable medicinal herbs in the world. Evening Primrose. This species varies in size from small alpine plants ranging about 10 centimeters tall to vigorous lowland species growing to three meters. The leaves form a rosette at ground level and spiral up to the flowering stems. The blades are deeply lobed the flowers of many of these species open only in the evening, hence the name evening primrose. They may open quickly, sometimes in under a minute. Most species have yellow flowers, but some have white, purple, pink, or red. Most native desert species are white. One species in western North America produces white flowers that turn pink with age. One of the most distinctive features of the flower is the stigma, which has four branches in an X shape. This plant is found commonly throughout the U.S. and Americas. The young roots can be eaten like a vegetable, or the shoots can be eaten as a salad. Poultice roots of the evening primrose are applied to piles and bruises. Tea made from the roots have also been used in the treatment of obesity and bowel pains. However, the more valuable parts are the seeds which are made into evening primrose oil. The oil is used for skin disorders such as eczema, psoriasis, and acne. 
Taking evening primrose oil with fish oil and calcium seeds seems to decrease bone loss and increase bone density in elderly people. It is also said to be used in the treatment of the following illnesses, yet some of these haven't been scientifically verified. Rheumatoid arthritis, osteoporosis, high cholesterol, heart disease, Alzheimer's disease, and schizophrenia. Gastrointestinal disorders including ulcerative colitis and peptic ulcer disease. Feverfew. Feverfew is a plant that's native originally to Asia but is now common throughout the world. Feverfew leaves are normally dried for use in medicine. Fresh leaves and extracts can also be used. People take feverfew by mouth for the prevention and treatment of migraine headaches primarily. Also for fever, arthritis, psoriasis, allergies, asthma, dizziness, anemia, common cold, earache, and nausea and vomiting. Feverfew is sometimes applied directly to the gums for toothaches or to the skin to kill germs. It is also applied to the skin for itching and to prevent insect bites as an insect repellent. Some people also use feverfew as a general stimulant. A tea is made from the whole plant. It is also used as a sedative. An infusion of this plant can be used to bathe your swollen feet. Applied externally as a tincture, this plant is used in the treatment of bruises and cuts. Chewing one to four leaves a day has proven to be an effective treatment in relieving and preventing migraine headaches. Garlic. Garlic is an herb that is grown around the world and it is thought that garlic was originally native to Siberia. Garlic is now commonly found throughout the United States. Garlic is a member of the onion family and is related not only to onion but also leeks and chives. It is used in many countries in various dishes and it's an extremely popular herb. It can heal a wide range of diseases. It is also low in calories yet rich in nutrients, vitamin C, B6, manganese, and fiber. The sulfur rich, strong, pungent smell of garlic can also keep away insects and even snakes. Many of garlic's therapeutic effects are derived from its sulfur containing compounds such as allicin. Quick relief from toothaches and it detoxifies your body. Prevention against allergies and improves iron metabolism. Some people apply garlic oil to their skin or nails to treat fungal infections, warts, and corns. It is also applied to the skin for hair loss and thrush. Boosting immune functions, antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, and antiparasitic properties. Improving cardiovascular health and circulation. Protects against clotting, retards plaque, improves lipids, and reduces blood pressure. And garlic is toxic to at least 14 kinds of cancer cells, including brain, lung, breast, gastric, and pancreatic. In addition, garlic may be effective against drug-resistant bacteria, and research has revealed that as allicin digests in your body, it produces sulfenic acid, a compound that reacts with dangerous free radicals faster than any other known compound to man. In order to get the health benefits, the fresh clove must be crushed or chopped in order to stimulate the release of an enzyme called alanase, which in turn catalyzes to the form of allicin. Allicin in turn rapidly breaks down to form a number of different organosulfur compounds. So to activate garlic's medicinal properties, compress a fresh clove with a spoon or similar prior to swallowing it. A single medium-sized clove or two is usually sufficient and is well tolerated by most people. The active ingredient is destroyed within one hour of smashing the garlic, so use it quickly. Black garlic, which is basically fermented garlic, and sprouted garlic may contain even more antioxidants than regular garlic. Marshmallow. This is the plant of which marshmallows were originally made of once. Flowers are in bloom during August and September, and the leaves and roots are what are used to make medicine. Marshmallow leaf and root are used for pain and swelling of the mucous membranes that line the respiratory tract. They are also used for dry cough, inflammation of the lining of the stomach, diarrhea, stomach ulcers, constipation, urinary tract in inflammation, and stones in the urinary tract. People sometimes apply marshmallow leaf and root directly to the skin for pockets of infection or abscess and skin ulcers, and it is used as a poultice for skin inflammation or burns and for other wounds. Marshmallow leaf is used topically as a poultice for insect bites also. Marshmallow root is applied to the skin as an ingredient in ointments for chapped skin as well as for pain and swelling of the feet and hands due to exposure to the cold. In foods, marshmallow leaf and root are used as a flavoring agent. Marshmallow works by forming a protective layer on the skin or lining of the digestive tract. 
It also contains chemicals that might decrease cough and help heal wounds. It's used in treating inflammations and irritations of the urinary and respiratory mucous membranes, excessive stomach acid, peptic ulceration, gastritis, diarrhea, constipation, stomach ulcers, irritation of the mouth and throat, and dry cough. It is also applied externally to help with bruises, sprains, and aching muscles. Medications used for early research suggest that taking marshmallow root by mouth for four weeks can reduce cough caused by ACE inhibitors. Some examples of ACE inhibitors include captopril, enalapril, and lisinopril. The roots and leaves of the marshmallow are the parts most commonly used medicinally. For sore throat and dry cough, one to two teaspoons should be taken two to three times a day. For stomach ulcers and indigestion, the tea works well. Pre-made teas can also be purchased or tea can be made by using two to five teaspoons of either powdered root or dried leaves and boiling them in five ounces of water. Tea containing both powdered root and dry leaves appears to be most effective. Pot Marigold. Pot marigold grows in almost any type of soil condition and can be found throughout the United States. It has no problem with nutritionally poor, very acidic, or very alkaline soils, just as long as it's moist. Well known as a remedy for skin problems, this deep orange flowered pot marigold variety is applied externally to help with insect bites, stings, sprains, wounds, sore eyes, and even varicose veins. Internally, it is used to treat fevers and chronic infections. The tea of the petals tone up circulation. Applying the crushed stems of the pot marigold to corns or warts will soon have them easily removable. Sage is an incredibly useful herb. Widely considered to be perhaps the most valuable herb, it is anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and antifungal. It was once used as a preservative for meat before the advent of refrigeration. And this is a very useful process to learn because you never know when you may be forced to hunt in the wild. Sage aids digestion, relieves cramps, reduces diarrhea, dries up phlegm, fights colds, reduces inflammation, and swelling. It also acts as a salve for cuts and burns and kills bacteria. Sage apparently even brings color back to gray hair. Sage is a powerful herb with flowers and soft leaves. The stem, flower, and leaves of sage can cure a number of diseases in an effective way. The sage is very rich in nutrients and antioxidants, and the health benefits of sage include improving your memory power, reducing depression, a natural remedy for healing wounds, balancing stomach problems, relief from toothache and keep away bad breath, prevents the chance of infection to lungs, nose, and throat, and it's one of the best antiseptic herbs. Its reputation is even represented in its scientific name, Salvia officinalis. Salvia means to heal, and it is derived from the Latin root salvir, which means to be saved. Internally, sage is used for indigestion, flatulence, liver complaints, excessive lactation, perspiration, salivation, anxiety, depression, female sterility, menopausal problems, and it is used externally for insect bites, skin infections, throat infections, mouth infections, and gum infections. The California Poppy. California poppy is native to California but is found along the entire western coast of the United States as far north as Washington state and as far south as Mexico. In addition, it has also been found in southern France, Australia, and Chile. It is considered to be an invasive species due to its extremely and uncanny ability to grow in almost any moist environment. It is the California state flower. Gentle in effect, the major health properties of this herb are sedative, analgesic, and antispasmodic in action. The California poppy is a member of the poppy family and somewhat distantly related to the opium poppy. The flower is usually golden orange, hence its common name, golden poppy. The receptacle has an expanded rim that holds the young bud until it blooms. The stem of the flower grows to approximately 5 to 20 inches tall, with teal-colored leaves sprouting from its base. The plant is prolific with numerous dark-colored seeds held in the center of the flower with slender, ribbed, single-celled seed capsules. While the California poppy does contain some sedative alkaloids, it contains no real opium. The most common use of this herb is in diffusion for treating the various physical and psychological conditions, including insomnia, bedwetting in children, incontinence, anxiety, and nervous tension. Because of its sedative properties, the California poppy can be used in the treatment of behavioral disorders such as ADD, ADHD, in children and young adults. In addition, this herb has also been used to improve intellectual capacity, memory, and concentration in the elderly. The California poppy has also been used as an herbal supplement for tooth pain. The necessary properties are found in the plant's root, which is cut and applied directly to the affected area. 
Due to its antimicrobial and analgesic properties, it is applied externally to cuts and scrapes for relief of pain and prevention of infection. The herb's analgesic and antispasmodic properties have been found useful in the relief of acute nerve and muscular centered pain and has been used as a remedy in cases of high fever, rapid pulse, and persistent spasmodic cough. The leaves of the flower are used externally in powder form as a treatment for the elimination of head lice with the same effectiveness as the creeping barberry. The parts of the plant that are used are the root, leaves, and seeds. It is dried and used for medicinal purposes as a diffusion, tincture, and powder. Well, that's it for now. Be sure to check out the rest of the series. We'll have many more episodes in this series featuring 10 different medicinal plants per video. We hope the video is informative and I hope you enjoyed it. And for now, Serious Survivor, out.